The adventure story begins in the 19th century, where all the people of the world were not very developed. Everyone preferred to live in simple and traditional ways. At this time, there were no maps, and no one knew that they all existed on Earth. Science hadn't advanced much either. Along with this, all the people believed in superstitions. Everyone believed that there was a very dangerous demon, devil monster, living on our Earth. It was so dangerous that if anyone looked into its eyes, they would not survive. Because of this fear, the villagers never went out of their homes after dark. Now, we see many ladies of the village who make flower baskets and float candles in the water inside them. Actually, the ladies of the village believe that if anyone finds that flower basket, they will marry them. Among them, a lady named Nes Gia is seen, whose flower basket has never been found by anyone. This means that she is still searching for her companion. But suddenly, when Nestasia was present on the shore of the sea, she saw a dead body. This dead body belonged to the daughter of the king of the nearby village. She was still breathing, meaning she was not dead. But Nestasia was very scared seeing all these things, and she started drowning in the water. Nestasia didn't know how to swim at all, and it seemed like she would also die. But suddenly, something strange with features of both animal and human, like a hybrid, catches her and brings her up. This creature had many fins on its body, and Nestsia had never seen such a creature before. The king's daughter also regained some consciousness as she saw all these things in a state of unconsciousness. But nobody knew anything about the creature with many fins. The next day, the king of another village finds his daughter who had come to the shore. The king's daughter was still breathing, which made him very happy. They take her inside to treat her. But the king's daughter tells them that she has very little time left. Her final wish was that after her death, no priest in the church would pray over her dead body for three days. She said that only then could they find out about the man with many fins. But the priest had to continuously pray for three days. Saying this, the king's daughter took her last breath. The king was very sad after his daughter's departure, but he wanted to fulfill her last wish. So, after his daughter's death, the king placed her dead body in the church nearby and called a priest. He explained to him that he would have to continuously pray for three days. The king promised to give him 1,000 gold coins, but if he didn't continue the prayer for three days, the king would have him killed. The priest, without delay, starts praying in the church near the king's daughter's dead body. He had started his prayers, but suddenly, within a few hours, things began to change. There were strong winds blowing in the church, and all the candles were extinguished as if a storm was coming. The priest realized that there could be a dangerous soul here, so he made a protection circle around himself. Maybe the priest's condition was very bad because suddenly, in the church, the soul of the king's daughter came, which looked very terrifying. She attacked the priest and killed him. Now, in the same village, a man named Jonathan is shown who was having fun with a lady, Actually, Jonathan dreams of making a map of the entire Earth, i.e., a map that shows the entire Earth. Before this, Jonathan had made a map of his entire village, which was quite accurate. So, to seek help in his work, he also wrote letters to many of his friends so that they could contribute to him. On the other hand, we are shown the same king whose daughter has now died. The king had given 1,000 gold coins to his priest and told him that the priest who is praying for my daughter in the church should be given these coins. Actually, the black priest was very cunning and clever, and he used to benefit people by making them fools. So, the black priest starts going inside the church. He was about to give all the coins to the priest, but as soon as he steps inside the church, he realizes that the old priest is already dead. There was a circle made around it, and the symbol of God was thrown. Seeing all these things, he immediately becomes interested because he had already guessed that all these things had been done by a bad spirit, and this priest was unable to protect himself even with the sign of the protection cross. This means that the attack by whatever spirit is very terrifying and dangerous. The bundle of his gold coins also falls, which was spread out completely because now the black priest is afraid of those dangerous spirits. Then the Maroon brothers come to that place. Both brothers were very greedy and used to loot people by catching them. After seeing so many gold coins, both of them started collecting them to keep them with themselves. But the black priest was trying to convince them that we should not do this. 
This place is very cursed and surrounded by dangerous spirits, and that same spirit took the life of our priest. But the Maroon brothers were busy collecting the gold coins continuously. However, the black priest says that if there are dangerous spirits in this place, then we will have to pack this place. So he leaves to fix the broken roof. The Maroon brothers were waiting downstairs. Suddenly, one of the brothers slips and wooden splinters enter his eyes. He screams in pain. The black priest understood that whether this attack happened or not, it must have been done by that same dangerous spirit who did not want anyone to enter this church. Along with the Maroon brothers, the black priest also starts running away from there. They directly head towards the king, who had come with his entire army near the church. The black priest then tells the king that a dangerous spirit attacked the Maroon brothers here and hid your daughter's dead body there. The dangerous spirits did not want anyone to enter inside. Although the king did not understand at first, soon, all around the church, black crows start circling, and the sight of black crows at night was very terrifying. Seeing such a terrifying scene, all the villagers started saving their lives and ran away from there. Now the king says that this whole church should be sealed so that the dangerous spirit can never come out. My dear daughter's dead body will remain safe there forever. Upon the priest's suggestion, the king also agrees that instead of leaving this church, another church should be built. So, the black priest starts constructing a new church, performing all the rituals. He gathers all the villagers and starts praying. Within a short time, many spirits start coming there, trying to stop the construction of this church. Some of these were such dangerous spirits that they could harm people, but good spirits wanted a new church to be built, and all the bad forces from the old church to go away. All the villagers are busy praying together, and then they notice the man with the same symbol on his singlet, who had helped many people. He was observing all these things, but for some reason, he never appeared in front of people. Now, several years have passed since Nathan, who was traveling around the world creating his map, also comes to this town. He joins his friends there, and they are all sitting and having food together when Jonathan's companions tell him that some time ago, we went inside this town, but our dear friend was lost there. Actually, when they all entered the town with their dear friend, they lost him. When they all entered a house, an old woman was staying there who invited them to stay for a night, but our dear friend found that place very strange. He started examining everything carefully. Suddenly, the old woman attacks the priest, who was actually a dangerous spirit. She then takes the priest, flying over the sea, and disappears. Now, the face of that evil spirit is visible in the reflection of the water, which is none other than the king's daughter's soul. The soul of the king's daughter has been freed from the church and has spread everywhere. Since then, everyone has not found their loved one. However, Jonathan doesn't believe in all these spiritual things as much as he believes in science. According to him, evil spirits are nothing more than superstition. Jonathan, continuously riding his horse and carriage through a jungle near the town, suddenly finds his horse running away. People see dangerous animals of a different type surrounding them from all sides. These animals don't look normal in any way, indicating that someone is controlling them. Jonathan immediately jumps into his carriage and starts attacking all of them. But because of their large number, it becomes impossible to fight them. All those animals start attacking the carriage, although Jonathan increases the speed of his horse even more. Unfortunately, his carriage catches fire due to bad luck. Jonathan turns his carriage towards the town, where many people were living. Constantly avoiding those dangerous animals, Jonathan enters the town and falls into the mud. At that place, the black priest was also present, who started confusing Jonathan by pretending to be a shapeshifter. He would show all the villagers books and start saying that this man is also a form of Satan and can be dangerous for our townspeople. That's why now the villagers had caught Jonathan and imprisoned him. Jonathan finally decides that he will also start the work of making his map from this town. So now he had stopped in the same village for many days. Now the black priest wanted him to work in place of the king. That is, his gaze was on the king's power, but he was more worried about the king's spiritual things. Because the king used to say that I can bring my daughter back by putting her soul back into her body. That is why the king used to call many priests to treat him. 
when it came to Jonathan here that an artist has come to his village who could make various maps. So now the king invites Jonathan to his palace and offers him to make a map of our entire town in any way, and include all these things that dangerous church should also be included. I want to save my daughter whatever happens the king offered Jonathan many gold coins in exchange for this, but all these things were not liked by the black priest at all. He wanted that these dangerous spirits should be inside the same church and the church should never be open so he contacted the Maroon brothers directly. The black priest started threatening both of them, saying that I know that last time you both stole all those coins and if the king finds out about it, then he will kill you both so the black priest told both of them Maru brothers to start their work. Their main purpose is to prevent the old dangerous church from opening because the king was trying his best to open it to put his daughter's soul back into her body. Now on the black priest saying, both Maroon brothers come to Jonathan and tell him different stories. One brother was telling that when a priest from our village went inside the church to pray in front of the king's daughter, then the soul of the king's daughter appeared in front of him and she started attacking him continuously. The soul had grown trees all around, so that he would keep hitting the priest continuously. On the other hand, the other brother tells the story that even though the king's daughter had become a ghost, that priest knew how to control her. He somehow trapped the soul of the king's daughter inside a box and broke that box with his weapon, so that the curse of that soul would be broken and it would end there. But Jonathan did not trust both of them. He understood that both brothers had drunk too much, so they were talking such nonsense. After a while, Jonathan sees that both brothers start changing suddenly. Their whole bodies started becoming like dangerous creatures. Seeing all this becoming quite dangerous there, now the soul of the king's daughter had also come, which was controlling everyone. Jonathan, who never trusted all these things until today, has now made a protective circle for his protection. He will be safe inside that circle. Now the whole place was on fire and suddenly dangerous spiritual souls start coming from all around. Jonathan had already reached another world where the gods of demons resided. Now the dangerous evil god, with its many eyes, appeared before Jonathan. The evil god gave Jonathan an important task now, to find out about many creatures with evil intentions, and if he didn't, the evil god would kill Jonathan. As soon as they finished speaking, Jonathan fainted there. Upon regaining consciousness, he set out to make a map near the old church. The king and his people had no idea about this, but both Maroon brothers had an idea of what Jonathan was going to do, so they started following him continuously. Campaigning on top of the church, Jonathan's attention wandered, and he was about to fall down, but a companion somehow saved him. The companion felt that the evil spirits inside the church would not allow him to make a map. Instead, they could harm Jonathan, so Jonathan's friend tried to stop him from going there. Here, one of the Maroon brothers stole all the gold coins at the last minute and buried them in the ground because he didn't want the real truth to come out in front of the king. But a few days later, when he comes to see the gold coins back, he finds out that someone has stolen them from there. He began to suspect that this deed could be Jonathan's or his younger brother's. The elder Maroon brother had left earlier to kill Jonathan. He tried to capture Jonathan's companion to find out his location. The Maroon brother tortured Jonathan's companion a lot, but after a while, due to distraction, Jonathan's companion immediately ran away from there. He realized that all these people wanted to kill Jonathan, so he reached Jonathan and told him everything. From here, Jonathan starts packing up all his belongings because he needs to leave this town now. Jonathan's friend, approaching his old friend named Nessia, was telling him to come with him. Nessia was the girl who had seen the horned creature first. After much thought, she became ready to go with her friend. Meanwhile, it was being shown in the village that the black priest was inciting all the people against the king because now the king was unable to solve all the problems of the village. Therefore, people's trust was shifting to those who were taking the lead. Jonathan and his companion were trying to leave this village, and they had kept their belongings in a boat. Meanwhile, the Maroon brothers were fighting over the gold coins, suspecting each other. The elder Maroon brother, in a fit of anger, would have killed his younger brother, and at the same time, Nasia had arrived there, who had seen everything. All the villagers were about to come after hearing the noise. Just then, the elder Maroon brother took out a knife and placed it into Gia's hand and began to act as if Nasia had killed his younger brother. When all the villagers saw this, they started to think that Nasia had done all this, and Satan had controlled her. Everyone started beating Nasia severely, 
and he grabbed her and took her towards the village. Now Jonathan, while packing his things, accidentally drops into the water. But he is helped by some unknown thing that he cannot see. Then Jonathan finds some parts of the same creature's body on the shore, which Nasia had also saved. Now Jonathan directly reached the king and started saying, I know you didn't just ask me to make a map. You want me to find and kill your son's murderer. The king didn't seem hesitant now to have to find his daughter's killer by any means necessary. All the villagers wanted to catch Tajia and kill him, but the king came and tried to stop them. The black priest had manipulated all the villagers with his words, so they no longer trusted the king's words. They all attacked the king, trying to knock him unconscious. Nathan was also now considered a criminal and was captured and locked inside a cave. Inside that cave, Nasia was also present. After talking to her, Jonathan found out that Tajia knew about the creature with many horns on its body. Nessia had met him several times before, but Jonathan wanted to stay safe in any way possible. Therefore, he started taking out his map and began to find out everything. Jonathan's friend, who was keeping an eye on the black priest, heard that the black priest wanted to kill the king and take his place, and the elder brother of the Maroon brothers would also take over this power. Jonathan's companion immediately went there to save him and took him out of the cave. Jonathan will have to find the horned creature somehow to save Nestsia's life. Meanwhile, the priest arrives with all the villagers to kill Nestsia. But the priest had to prove that Nestsia had a demonic spirit. Therefore, the black priest tied Nestsia to a boat and explained that if Nestsia went underwater, it meant she had a demonic spirit in her body. All the people under Black Priest's influence punctured the boat so that it would sink, and this would make everyone in the village believe that Nessia was cursed. Jonathan and his companion wanted to reach Nest Zinc to help her, but it might take them too long. Suddenly, from the other side of the river, a dangerous creature with many horns on its body appeared. Everyone in the village mistook it for a demon and tried to kill it because it was this dangerous creature that was bothering the evil god. Jonathan went straight to the church, where the body of the king's daughter was kept. When Jonathan went inside the church, he saw that the body of the king's daughter was still the same, which meant that all the rumors spreading were completely false. Suddenly, an unknown man who was trying to steal Jonathan's map from behind was stopped when Jonathan attacked him and stopped him. It wasn't anyone else but the old priest who had come back for a day. When Nathan asked him, the priest told him everything. Many years ago, when he had come here for the first time, he had fallen in love with the king's daughter. When the village girls were floating candles inside the bucket, I had knowingly taken the candle of the princess in my hand, confirming that she would marry me. But the king's daughter was very rich, and I, the priest, wanted to acquire her by any means possible. He had worn a very strange costume made by himself out of shame. The costume belonged to none other than the creature with horns, indicating that it was a creature's costume, not anyone else's. It was the priest who was pretending to be a dangerous creature because in this way, the princess couldn't recognize him, and she spent time with him. But one day, someone wearing the same costume might have killed the princess. Even the priest didn't know about it. Suddenly, the same black priest attacked Jonathan from behind, hitting him on the head and knocking him unconscious. When he regained consciousness, the black priest revealed that by wearing that costume, I was the one who killed the king's daughter because doing all these things makes the king even weaker, so the king's power goes to the black priest. And now that Jonathan knows the truth, the black priest wants to kill him too. The priest started saying to Jonathan that you are going to die, so pray for yourself. Now everyone in the village had an idea that there was nothing like a creature with horns, it was just a costume. So now all the people went against the black priest and started moving towards him to kill him. The black priest takes out his weapon to kill Jonathan, but suddenly a cross of God falls from above, killing the black priest immediately. And all these things happen in front of everyone so they consider it a miracle. Nestsia, who was sinking continuously in the river, would have been saved suddenly by someone and brought safely to the surface. After bringing her up, Everyone realized that the king was right and the black priest was wrong. From among the Maroon brothers, the elder brother, by saving his life, was trying to escape from the village. But the horse of the Maroon brother immediately hits him with a powerful kick, causing him to die right there. After surviving Nassia's correct survival, now the priest had become quite close to him. 
Nizia had now joined Jonathan's companion, whom he loved. The king performs her ritual and arranges her funeral very well after all things become normal. Jonathan left to make a very good map of the whole world, and our story ends here.